Hello and welcome to another video tutorial about FreeCAD. In this video tutorial we are going to model this wiffle ball shown here on the screen and we will use the part workbench this time. As you may remember from the last lesson with the Turner's Cube we used the part design workbench whose basic idea is that you draw sketches and extrude or revolve them into 3D shapes. The part workbench has a different workflow. As you can see here from its symbols, it will allow you either to insert part primitives and do boolean operations with them. You can either fuse them, you can cut shapes, or you can uh, intersect make an intersection of the uh, shapes. But also the part workbench has methods of drawing sketches and extruding and revolving them or doing something like loft or sweep. These icons cited here are for measurement purposes. So let's begin with our lesson. So now I'm going to close this document here and I'm going to create a new document. The first thing I will do is insert a cube. As you can see here a cube was inserted with standard dimensions and a standard position. I just changed here to axiometric view and now I say fit all to be sure that I have everything on screen. So if I highlight here in the tree view the cube and switch to the data tab, it tells me that the standard cube has 10 millimeters length, 10 millimeters width, and 10 millimeters eight. So we are going to change these values by clicking one time inside this box and we will change the length to be of 90 millimeters and we will also change the other two values to be also 90 millimeters. Let's uh, repeat the fit all command to zoom out and if I change now to wireframe mode and if I say view toggle axis cross, you will see that the cube was inserted at this position. Here is the origin. Since it is a good idea when modeling in 3D space to use symmetry wherever possible, I would say that it is a very good idea to move the object that the origin is in the middle of the cube. We can accomplish this by highlighting the cube in the tree view and changing its placement here. You click in this box on the right side and then you see three dots appear. You click once more on the three dots and now you can change the placement values of the cube. At the moment it is standard at 0, 0, 0 and it has no rotation. So the first thing I'll do, because it's my personal preference, I'll apply incremental changes to an object placement. I rarely do all changes at once because that allows me to control a little bit if everything is going the right way. So I tick this box and say to move the object to the correct location I will first correct the value of the x-axis. Since we applied 90 millimeters to this distance here I will correct the x-value by highlighting the zero and then entering with the keyboard minus 45 millimeters. As you can see here, the object did move 
in x direction to be correct in negative x direction by 45 millimeters. We will repeat these operations with the y and the z axis every time minus 45 millimeters. As you can see, if I rotate the object a little bit, the origin is now where I want it to be, exactly in the middle of the cube. I click on apply to make sure that the values are entered and I say OK. And as you can see here, these placement values did now change. So I go back to axometric U, I say fit all, and I say view toggle axis cross to get rid of the axis cross at the moment. So the next step would be to insert another cube. So I click on the insert cube icon, and as you can see here, this cube is also inserted at the origin with the standard values of 10 mm each dimension. As I highlight it here in the tree view and make sure I have switched to a data tab here, you see the values appear here. Okay, this time we will change the cube to have 80 mm in every direction and now we have to change the placement as well. So I did click one time here in the placement row and then I click on these three uh, on these three small dots here and now I make sure to apply incremental changes and I will uh, move the object in negative x direction about 40 millimeters, the same with the y and the z direction. I click on apply. You see, if I cl uh, clicked on apply, these values are resetted because I clicked apply incremental changes. And the dialog would be ready to accept further instructions. So now I click on OK and I've inserted uh, the, sec uh, the second cube successfully. So now we will do a boolean operation. We will highlight here in the tree view the cube. When we do a multi-select by pressing Ctrl, keep Ctrl pressed, and highlight cube 001. Now we will perform a Boolean cut by clicking on the second icon here in this arrangement. Now as you can see here, I did a cut between, uh, I, I did cut away the volume of cube 001 from the volume of the cube. And now they are uh, toggled invisible, these two cubes, so that the new uh, shape, which is uh, actual and, and present, is the cut shape. So the next step would be to insert a cylinder. As you can see here, the cylinder is inserted with standard position and standard uh, dimension values. So I click on the cylinder and look at the data tab. The radius I will change to be 27,5 millimeters. And the 8 I will change to be 90 millimeters. And now 
I must uh, correct the placement. So I click here and now I click on the three dots and I will correct placement in negative Z direction by 45 millimeters. I click on apply. Okay, that's it. Now I will do once more a Boolean operation, a Boolean cut. So I highlight the cut shape, I press control and keep control pressed. I highlight the cylinder and click on cut. Let's change the view to as is and you can see what we just did. We made a hollow box with two cylindrical openings. Here I choose the cylinder to be of the same height as the box, which is not every time a very good idea when performing Boolean operations. It could be successful, but uh, there are some times, uh, occasions when you have coplanar faces that the boolean operation will fail. So it is often a better idea to have overlapping shapes when performing boolean operations. Ok, now we will change back to wireframe mode to have a better visual representation of what is going on. We will minimize this view here and we will insert a second cylinder. This cylinder I will also change the dimensional values, the radius we will have 27,5 millimeters and the eighth should be 90 millimeters. I click an empty space. So you see we have here a second cylinder inserted. I will highlight the cylinder again because I need the placement to be changed as well. So I will click here into placement row and then I will click on these three dots and I will make sure that incremental changes are applied. So the first thing I will do is I will rotate the cylinder around the X axis. So I switch here to the X axis and let's try an angle of 90 degrees. This looks like the perfect orientation but the position is not okay. As you can see here I have to correct the position in the Y axis direction. Okay, I click apply to accept the changes I just did and then I correct the value of the Y -X, uh, axis by minus 45 no? Ah, sorry, my fault. We are not going in negative direction, we are going in positive direction by 45 millimeters. This looks good. I click on apply, say OK, and then I will perform another Boolean cut with these shapes. So I mark here cut 001. I press control, keep control pressed and do highlight this, uh, uh, this cylinder I just inserted and then I will perform a cut and that's it. OK, now we will insert another cylinder. We will highlight this cylinder here in the tree view. We will change the dimensions also to 27,5 millimeters 
and V8 to be 90 millimeters. And when we need the placement to be changed, I will apply an incremental change. And now I will not rotate about the X axis, I will rotate about the Y axis. Okay, so we change here to Y. We apply 90 degree change. This looks very good. We say apply. And then we have to correct the value of the X axis, this time in negative direction, minus 45. Because we applied here 90 millimeters, and then we move, uh, we did move the uh, um, main cylinder to be uh, placed so that the origin is in the middle of a box, so it makes 45 millimeters as correction value. We click on apply and say OK, and we apply also a Boolean cut to these two shapes. Remember to highlight the first shape, the base shape you can call it, and then doing a multi-selection by highlighting a shape which has to be cut off, and then you perform a cut. As we change the view mode, you see what we have just done here. So we change the axometric view, save it all. And now we have done our first operations in the part workbench. Of course, I did here several cut steps, one after each other, to show you how the logic of these operations works. In real life, you could speed up the operation by inserting a second cube and the three cylinders by correcting their dimensions and placements, and then you could do a union of several shapes, in this case the secondly inserted cube and the three cylinders, and then you could do a boolean cut of the first cube and the just multi-fused uh, shapes. That would be a little bit more efficient in this way. Now for the last step of our operations, we want to cut off the corners of this box. Of course, we could do this by inserting cubes and making boolean cuts with the cubes, but I like to show you another way. For this uh, other way, we will need the part design workbench. And since you want to cut away material, you would normally use the pocket operation. In this case, this is not possible because the pocket operation needs a sketch mapped to the face of an existing object. In this case, we would need a shape in the middle of a material, you could say, and then you would cut away the material. And this is not possible with a pocket operation in FreeCAD at the moment. So we have to take another approach. We have to do a, a solid object and then we could cut the solid object from uh, the basic box. So I will begin with inserting a sketch. In this time we will use um, the XZ plane and I say OK and then I will go I will be going to use the polyline tool. I will draw three triangles, making sure that for horizontal and vertical lines 
are recognized and that I will have a, a closed sketch here uh, by um, clicking in a way that uh, I will end up at, a, at the first point of this triangle here. Okay, so I will do the next triangle. As you can see on the lower right corner of the cursor, um, the solver does recognize uh, a horizontal constraint. So I will click here and I will finish. As, as you can see, I make sure that there is a, a small point appearing in the lower right corner at the cursor. So that auto constraining coincidence is enabled. I will use the polyline tool once more. And I will do last triangle. Okay. So now we have all triangles finished. Now we have 16 degrees of freedom in our sketch. And a good way of constraining is to first set the obvious geometrical constraints because we will need uh, less CPU performance than the dimensional constraints. So I can highlight uh, all of the horizontal and vertical lines and apply an equality constraint to them. Now the next idea is to apply symmetry to these two points and then I will also apply symmetry to these points and then I will apply symmetry here And we are left with three degrees of freedom left. Applying symmetry here would over constrain the sketch because I applied symmetry here and I applied symmetry here. It is in mathematics now obligatory that this must also be symmetrical. You can try and you will see that you get an error message from a solver. So now I'm going to set a distance between the origin and this line. The distance should be 56 millimeters. And I'm going to apply. Oops. Now the point is highlighted. Okay, now I have highlighted these two points and I will apply, uh, apply a, a vertical distance of 100 millimeters. And then I will apply here a horizontal distance between these two points of 130 millimeters. Okay, the sketch is now fully constrained. Let's close it. As you can see here, the sketch has the wrong orientation, or to say the wrong placement. So I can also change the placement of sketches in FreeCAD. I will do that now. I highlighted here the sketch, that's okay. And now to change the placement, I will click on the three points. And I, as you can see here, will have to do a rotation around the z-axis. Okay, I change to the z-axis. Oops. I 
I apply incremental changes, that should be ticked first, then change to the zx, now we are correct, and if I say 45 millimeter, uh, degrees is the change, as you can see here, we move the sketch in the correct position. I click on apply and say OK. OK, the next operation will be to highlight the sketch and to use the pad operation. We will apply a length of 60 millimeters, symmetric to plane. This looks really good. We apply OK. And then we will change to the part workbench. We will highlight cut 003. We will press Ctrl and uh, keep it pressed. We will also highlight pad and perform our cut operation. This looks really good and it looks like we want it to be OK. So now for last step of our operation we change back to the part design workbench. We create a sketch in the XZ plane. We apply OK. We will we'll draw once more our triangles. And this is the second one. OK. Horizontal, vertical. Here we go. Oh, I see. I did something wrong. So I do a, a right click in empty space to close the polyline command. And I do multi selection of these two lines and press delete on the keyboard to delete them. You can also, if you are wrong with uh, constraints, do a right click on a constraint and rename or delete it. And you can also highlight it with a left click and press delete on the keyboard to delete it. And now I didn't uh, catch up with uh, the right point here, so I will highlight this point. I will press Ctrl and keep it pressed and highlight this point and apply a coincidence constraint so that the triangle now is closed again. And I will reselect the polyline tool, horizontal, vertical, let's move back to this point. Here we are, all four triangles now. Ready. So now we apply our equality constraint. OK. We apply our symmetry constraint here. We have also symmetry applied here and symmetry applied here. Oh, my fault. Symmetry we did want. Okay, now we have three degrees of freedom left. Uh, so we set a distance here to be 56 millimeters. We set the vertical distance here to be 100 millimeter, more than the 90 millimeter length of the cube. You can drag around the constraints in 3D space by highlighting them, clicking once more and keep the left mouse button clicked and then no, oops, here we 
go. You can drag around the constraints in 3D to a position mm, of your liking. And we have, okay, one degree of freedom left, so we will highlight these two points and apply a horizontal length of 130 millimeter. As you can see, I choose 130 millimeter because we need the cross-sectional length of this cube. Uh, one side of the cube is 90 millimeters, and cross-sectional length would be square root of 2 multiplied with 90 millimeter, which adds up to 120 something millimeters. So I choose 130 millimeter, and that's okay. So we close the sketch. The sketch is still highlighted. So now we can change its placement. We tick the box to apply incremental change. We change the axis to the z-axis. And the angle should be minus 45 degrees. As you can see here, the sketch is moving in the right position. We click on apply and OK. Now we will do once more a pad operation with 60 mm symmetrical to plane. That is OK. We change back to the part workbench. We highlight the two bodies, or the two shapes to be correct, and we make our cut, cut operation. And that's it, the wiffle ball is co complete. With this operation, we have reached the end of today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed watching. Please feel free to leave any comments. And maybe see you next time in another video. Bye!